All right, gents, we've got a five round fight between Italian and American shoes. You ready? Let's get into it. In the green, white, and red corner, we've got Italian style shoes. Weighing in at almost 5.6 ounces, these shoes are known throughout the world for their style, for their elegance, for the Spreads Tura, which is the effortless style that they signal. Now, over in the red, white, and blue corner, we've got American style shoes. Weighing in at eight ounces, American style shoes are known for their practicality, their ruggedness, their usefulness. Oh, what's going on here, guys? We've got some unexpected visitors. Looks like the English are gonna be siding with the Americans. Very similar in build and many of the same characteristics. We are gonna find that the English are gonna line up right behind the Americans. All right, gentlemen, let's have a clean fight. No water, no salt, and no scuffing below the belt. Ready? Let's get into this. In round one, gentlemen, we're gonna focus in on the leather, specifically the leather in the upper part of the shoe. So let's see what the Italians bring to the table. What I see here is a beautiful calfskin, grade one. Now, grade one, if you understand grades when it comes to cow hides, grade one is only 13% of the hide. Grade two is gonna be 30% of the hide. So understand grade one and grade two are the most common for high-end dress shoes, and they are less than half of an entire cowhide. Now, what we're gonna see in grade one, that's over on the lower back portion of the cowhide, there are gonna be less blemishes. It's also going to be some of the most dense, water-resistant we're going to see. Basically, it is the cream of the crop. It is the best. Grade two, we sometimes do see some blemishing in there, and definitely in grade three and grade four. But this right here, sets it apart. In addition, it's a calf skin. So calf skin versus a fully grown cow. What we're going to see is the calf skin is going to have a thinner build, a thinner leather. It's going to be also still be very dense. It's going to be very soft. So it is highly sought after. Now let's talk about the thickness of the upper. So usually on a calfskin, we're gonna see anywhere from four to six ounces on the thickness. That's about uh, just around two millimeters. Now, if they have an inner lining, that's gonna be another 0.4 millimeters. So about one extra ounce in here. But generally, Italian shoes on the upper are going to be thinner, are going to be basically very soft and are gonna use high quality leather. Next up, let's talk about the Americans. What leather are they bringing to the fight? All right, we've got cowhide right here, and this looks like a grade one, maybe a grade two cowhide. You can't really tell all the time because oftentimes a grade two, it's gonna be, yes, it's gonna have a few blemishes, but on a shoe like this that actually is made up of multiple leather pieces, they can slip a grade two in here, which is perfectly fine, assuming it doesn't have any blemishes, but the grade two and the fact it's coming from a cowhide sometimes drive down the price a bit, so, so that's pretty good for the consumer. Here we've got quarter Cordovan. Now, Cordovan is actually leather from a horse. This is going to be more dense, and both of these leathers are going to be more thick. So, calf hide, on the other hand, may be four to five ounces weight up on top. What we're going to see here is five to six to seven ounces in terms of the thickness of the upper. All right, Jen, so how am I going to call this round? I'm going to give this one a draw. There are advantages and disadvantages to each type of leather, so you need to find the leather that's going to best suit you. And what are the English doing? Go get in your corner. You should not be, gosh, darn English jumping in the fight. Now, before I get too far ahead in this video, I wanna let you know that all the beautiful Italian shoes you see in this video are brought to you by Ace Marks. Guys, I'm linking to them down in the description. They're the paid sponsor of today's video, and I love this company because they just make such beautiful, amazing shoes. And you're gonna find throughout this video, I'm gonna talk about the beauty of Italian shoes. I mean, don't wanna spoil what's coming up here, but I will tell you guys, if you go over to Ace Marks website and you look at their new designs, yes, they've got new designs, you are gonna be blown away Beautiful shoes, guys. If you want to see them, go check out Ace Marks. And, guys, go check out their accessories. Look at things like this, elasted shoe tree. The difference between all the other shoe trees out there and elasted shoe tree is this is made specifically to fit into these shoes. So it actually, if you get them wet, it's going to fit right in there, and it's going to work to reshape the shoe exactly to where it was. If you want to go buy a shoe, well, guess what? You can actually buy a matching belt that goes perfectly with it. So, guys, a wide variety variety of styles. Overall, a great company. I'm proud to bring them to you because they are also a great deal. Go check them out. Again, I'm linking to Ace Marks down in the description. Awesome company. Highly recommended. Round two, gentlemen, we're going to be talking about shoe construction, how the shoes are made. Now, let's talk about when you are spending good money on a pair of shoes, like at least 
$200. Look at the bottom and you want to make sure that it's got stitching right in there. If you can't see stitching, then most likely that shoe has been glued together. Glued shoes in general, I'm not going to recommend. Now, I understand if you're spending under a hundred bucks, that's probably what you're going to get. And if you're just starting off and you find something you really like the look of, go for it. You know, I want you guys to start dressing better, but if you're going to be spending more than 200, more than 300, you want to make sure you're getting your money's worth and you want to make sure it is stitched together. Shoes that are stitched together are simply going to hold together longer and they can be resold. That's a big one. This could last you 10, 20, 30 years and the you can just resold this, you know, 10, 20 times. Now, let's talk about the Blake stitch. This right here is a Blake stitch. When I look at this, I can immediately tell because when I go around here, I do not see any stitching. It's just not visible. And yet, I can see the stitching down here at the bottom. It's very tight. It's a very elegant look. And that is what I look at the construction of the Blake stitch is it's very simple. It works and it's simply they've done the stitching on the inside of the shoe. So, what's the advantage of this is when you look at it overall, it's just very simple and it works. It can be resold. Now, let's look over here at a Goodyear welt. So, with the big thing we're going to notice immediately with the Goodyear welt is that I can see the stitching on the outside. The reason I can do that is because there's an additional what's called the welt. So, there's two attachments on this one. Now, what's the advantage to this? Now, it used to be that it was easier simply to resole. Now, most cobblers, they're going to have access to something that can do a Blake stitch. So, that's not always true and sometimes the materials were a little bit more expensive for a Goodyear welt. So, I always thought it kind of evened out. Uh, some people will say it's going to be more water resistant, the Goodyear welt. But if you are walking through puddles on purpose, you know, you you live in a place where it's slushy and snowy most of the year and you're wearing your best shoes to commute to and from work all the time, don't do that. Keep your great looking shoes at home. Again, water salt damage, the best way to prevent it from damaging your shoes is to avoid it. But to me, these two different types of construction, I, I don't know. I, I'm again, who, what am I going to do here? You guys aren't going to like to hear this. I'm going to give it a draw because there are advantages and disadvantages to both. So, for this particular fight, guys, we've got a draw. Round three, gentlemen, let's talk about comfort. So, when it comes to the upper of the Italian shoes, like I talked about, it's going to be thinner. It's usually going to be made from calfskin. Therefore, it's going to be softer, more supple, and it's easier to break in than any of the heavier leathers out there. Now, when it comes to the Italian shoe construction of the insole, of the outsole, we are oftentimes not going to see a really thick, no big steel shank or anything like that. What we're just going to see is they use a very dense leather on the outsole, on the insole, put it together, and that is it. Now, with the American style, what we're going to see is a steel shank. So, a steel shank is going to run, if you can imagine, right up in here and basically it allows the shoe to bounce back. So, also with the outsole, with the insole, you'll see sometimes a cork lining put in there to basically fill in around the shank and you're sometimes going to see the outer and the inner sole be a bit higher. And some people will argue that it gives it a bit more cushion. Some people don't really like it because, again, it makes the shoe look more bulky. Now, let's talk about the upper. Again, cordovan. Cow hides, what we're going to see with those is that they're going to take longer to basically get accustomed to. They are not going to be as flexible. Some people love this, other people they don't like it. So, it really comes down to personal opinion. All right, gents, I'm going to be really subjective here, but I'm going to give round three for comfort to the Italians. Round four, we're talking about durability, fight. Hey, hey, keep the scuffs above the waist. So, talking about durability, any shoe, gentlemen, that you don't take care of, you don't condition, you don't clean, you don't polish, it's going to be destroyed by inclement weather. So, take care of your shoes. Doesn't matter how durable it says it is, you will destroy it early. But if looking at the Italian style shoes, I've talked about this, the outsole, the insole, the upper is all going to be made from a thinner, more delicate leather. Now, a lot of people like this because it looks great. It overall, you know, it has a great feel, very elegant, very sleek. But if you want something that's possibly going to last longer. And again, assuming that all things are the same, you will probably see that with the American shoes, especially ones that use a cordovan on top, a horse hide leather. That is going to outlast a cow hide. It's also going to be about $100 on average more expensive. Also, what we'll see with a Goodyear welt, because it's got that excess material in here with the welt, sometimes they'll use also a thicker outer sole. We can see the soles last a bit longer. Round four, I've got to give it to the American shoes. Hey, no fighting after the fact. Round five, let's talk about style, fight. All right, so style is totally subjective, but when you see a pair of shoes like this, I mean, it's just like, wow, 
Wow. I mean, I love the suede with the leather right there, with a the bit of broguing, with the really tight stitching. Just the overall look of these are beautiful. And this is a very hard one. I would say that when you go over to Italy, what you're going to find, you're going to find fourth generation cobblers who are building and making amazing footwear. One of the advantages of shoes being made in Italy is that they've got the Mediterranean climate. So this is something that they can be a little bit more fun. They're not so much worried about inclement weather. Now let's talk about the American style. So the American style has always been about getting the job done, about practicality. Style is nice to have, but not if the shoes simply aren't going to get the job done. Now, this is a chukka boot. It's using a suede right here, but the chukka boot comes out of World War II. It was developed specifically by British officers who wanted a shoe for their troops and for themselves that could provide more support when they were in this desert, rocky environment. Now, when you look at this shoe right here, I can see the stitching. I can see, you know, this right here is a a very simple shoe, but there is something about, something elegant about simplicity. Round number five, gentlemen, I'm going to give to the Italians. Oh, and that is it. Today's fight is probably going to be contested for years and years. The Italians are going to say that I definitely gave it to them, but I can see where the English and the Americans are coming from. They're like, hey, we've got artisans in our countries that are making amazingly stylish shoes. We should have won that last round. And I agree that it's very subjective. Remember, gents, at the end of the day, you need to buy the right pair of shoes for you. And I advocate you spend a little bit more to get exactly what you want, that you love. So when you wear it, you feel like a million bucks. Now understand, gents, you don't have to spend a million bucks to get a great pair of quality made shoes. Use all the details I talked about in this video to find the right pair for you and go check out Ace Marks. I'm linking to them down in the description. A great company. I remember when they first came out on Kickstarter, I sent them to you guys. I talked about them and to this day, they still continue to produce amazing Italian made shoes. So go check them out guys. I mean, this pair right here is brand new. They've got a whole new line. Go check out their lasted shoe trees. These things, I mean, it's awesome that they actually make a product that fits in there and will reshape the shoe every time. What'd you guys think? I thought that was kind of a fun video. Let me know in the comments. I always appreciate you learning from you guys and the community we build here at Real Men Real Style. Take care. I'll see you in the next video.